Let's dive into the rivers originating from the glaciers, the Himalayan rivers. Now these rivers are generally long and are joined by many large tributaries along their course. The major Himalayan river systems are the Indus river system, the Ganga river system and the Brahmaputra river system. Out of these, let's first take a closer look at the Indus river system. The Indus is one of the longest rivers in the world and one of the most important river systems in India. I'm sure you must have guessed this. The Indus river was home to one of the oldest known civilizations in the world. It has a history of more than 4,500 years. The gentle slope and fertile plains of river Indus helped nourish this civilization. So what does the journey of this ancient nourishing river look like? The Indus River begins its journey near the Mansarovar Lake in Tibet, in China. The people there identify the river as Singi Khaman or Lion's Mouth. From Tibet, flowing towards the west, the river enters India through Ladakh. There are some exquisite sights of the gorges made by the Indus River along its course in this region. The Zaskar, the Nubra, the Hunza and the Shiok are some of the tributaries that join the Indus River. From here, the Indus River flows through the regions of Baltistan and Gilgit. Thereafter, the river emerges from the mountains at Adok. Well, we can find some of the other tributaries such as the Satlij, the Beyaz, the Ravi, the Chenab and the Jhelum. All of them join together to enter the river near the city of Mithankot, situated in Pakistan. The river then flows south and drains into the Arabian Sea with a journey spanning a distance of 2,900 kilometers. A little over a third of the Indus River Basin is located in India, whereas the rest of the river basin lies in Pakistan. So this is the journey of the Indus River, which goes from its origin in Tibet to the Arabian Sea. However, this mesmerizing river has also been a source of conflict between India and Pakistan. As the river water is shared by both the countries, there have been some disagreements between them about who gets how much water. So to solve this issue, the Indus Water Treaty was signed in the year 1960. The treaty gave the waters of the western rivers, that is the Indus, the Chelam and the Chenab to Pakistan. And those of the eastern rivers, that is the Ravi, the Beas and the Satlij to India. Consequently, India can use 20% of the total water of the Indus River system. This water is used for irrigation in Punjab, Haryana and the southern and the western parts of Rajasthan.